My name is Derek Mulholland, and my project is the effect of various organic dyes on the power output and efficiency of various dye sensitized solar cells. Currently, most of the world's energy is a result of the burning of fossil fuels. This is not only dangerous to the environment, but it is also unreliable, as there are finite amounts of fossil fuels on Earth. Solar energy has been a promising alternative to traditional energy production. Dye-sensitized solar cells are a possible solution to this global energy issue. Dye-sensitized solar cells are a low-cost, easy-to-construct alternative to traditional silicon solar cells. DSSCs use cheaper materials that allow for the cost of construction to be lowered. Dye-sensitized solar cells use titanium dioxide particles as a semiconductor layer, shown in purple. Photoabsorbent dye is bonded to these particles, represented by the blue dots. This layer is between two transparent fluorine-doped tinoxide glass layers, the top serving as the anode and the bottom serving as the cathode. The cathode layer has graphite on its surface. The FTO plates are held together by binder clips. When light hits the cell, it is absorbed by the dye used in the DSSC. Photons excite the titanium dioxide particles and cause them to release electrons. The orange shading represents the excitation of the titanium dioxide nanoparticles. These electrons exit the cell through the anode, travel through a load, and return to the cell through the cathode. At the anode, iodide electrolyte in the cell is oxidized to form triiodide and is then reduced at the cathode to form iodide again. This redox couple replenishes the electrons and allows for a continuation of the circuit. Figure 6 shows the chemical structures for chlorophyll, and Figure 7 shows the main structure of anthocyanin pigments. These two chemicals are known substances that have the ability to be used in dye-sensitized solar cells as the light-absorbing dye. Figures 8 and 9 show the absorption spectrums for both chlorophyll and the main anthocyanin pigments. Chlorophyll has absorption peaks at about 425 and 670 nanometers. Anthocyanin pigments have an absorption peak at about 500 nanometers. However, using multiple dyes with different absorption spectra would result in a dye that is able to absorb a greater range of colored photons. Amau and Komori examined the usage of chlorophyll extracted from spirulina in a dye-sensitized solar cell using titanium dioxide as the semiconductor. Their DSSE had an open current voltage of almost 450 millivolts and a current short circuit of 0.3 milliampers. Figure 11 shows the absorption spectrum for the dye used in the solar cell. Alhamid et al. evaluated various anthocyanin dyes in their experiment. First, they looked at the concentration of anthocyanins within several organic substances. Anthocyanins are the photoabsorbent material found in some fruits. It was found that choky berries had the highest concentration of anthocyanin, shown by Figure 12. This experiment also looked at the absorption spectra of various anthocyanin dyes extracted from different sources. Figure 13 shows that by Combining chlorophyll, raspberries, and hibiscus extract, these scientists were able to expand the absorption spectrum. This principle can be applied to other organic dyes as well. Finally, Chen et al. assessed the absorption spectrum of various dyes commonly used in dye-sensitized solar cells. The individual absorption spectra for the individual dyes is shown in figure 14. Figure 15 represents the combined dye that was created for this experiment and it is clearly shown to have a greater absorption spectrum than each of the individual dyes. The purpose of this experiment is to create an efficient dye-sensitized solar cell by combining dyes to expand their absorbent spectrum. The alternate hypothesis for this experiment is that dye-sensitized solar cells with combined dyes will produce the highest power and efficiency when compared to other groups. The methodology for this experiment is as follows. First, dye-sensitized solar cells are constructed using fluorine-doped tinoxide glass with titanium dioxide annealed to one plate and dyed overnight. The opposite fluorine-doped tinoxide glass is covered in pencil graphite. The two plates are held together by binder clips. An iodide electrolyte is pipetted into the cell. Phase 1 of this experiment is the use of anthocyanin dyes. Blackberry dye and chokeberry dye are extracted the same way by crushing 50 grams of material in a mortar and pestle. 
and mixing it with 100 milliliters of, eth of methanol. Blackberry dye will act as the control for this experiment. The dyes are also combined in a one-to-one -one ratio to create a third dye for this phase. Phase two of this experimentation Phase two of this experiment is use of chlorophyll dyes extracted from both spirulina and kale. These dyes are combined to these dyes are also combined to create an additional dye. Spirulina dye is extracted by mixing its powder with 100 milliliters of methanol. Kale dye is extracted by grinding it with a mortar and pestle, then combining it in a mixture where every one gram of kale used is mixed with 10 milliliters of ethanol. Phase 3 of this experiment is the combination of dyes across groups. Each anthocyanin and dye is combined with a different chlorophyll dye in a one-to-one -one ratio. Two cells are made for each individual variable group. The setup for this experiment involves the use of a 100 watt bulb placed 30 centimeters away from the cell, 5 minutes for each individual cell. Voltage, amperage, and resistance are all calculated for every experimental group using a multimeter. Power is calculated using the equation of voltage squared over resistance, and efficiency is calculated by dividing power output by the power input. A one-way ANOVA test followed by a post hoc chauffe with a p-value of less than 0.05 will be run following this experiment using IPM SPSS version 24. Power and efficiency graphs will also be created in Microsoft Excel. Here is my bibliography, and here is my budget.